Hi friends, if you have been watching my channel for a long time, then you mostly likely remember a project about the trash bin with an automatic lead. This project was one of the first in Arduino, one can say my debut, but it had one very big drawback. The system consumed more than 20 milliamps, which made it impossible to work autonomously from batteries. And today, with a new knowledge and dozens of projects behind me, I will correct this problem. To create this, we need a bug with a lid opening on the hinges. This was bought in a household goods and called a bucket for washing powder. As a board of Arduino, I took nano model and a server drive is desirable with a metal reducer. Next, an ultrasonic distance sensor and a battery compartment for the three finger batteries. And for the beauty, let's take this stylish plastic case. The links to the components will be as always in the description under the video. First, let's make an opening mechanism and electronic unit. First, we get rid of excess plastic on the lead, it latch and handle. The distance sensor fits perfectly into the box, only the connection pins are sticking out, so we remove them. First, we will cut the plastic of the pins. At the saver driver, we extend the wires as they must reach to the front of the trash bin. And we are connecting everything according to the simple seriot. The sensor will power it from the one of the pins of Arduino, so it's not to solder a pile of wires to the power pin, because the servo is already connected there. And that's how it looks in hardware. Now we must place everything in the case. First we will make a holes for the sensor. First I drilled the hole with a common drill for the accurately of the center and the elegans with a step drill. Now we fill everything with hot glue. Well, the battery compartment is glued with a double side adhesive tape, and the wire from the servo driver will go out through the side hole. Also, from the servo driver, we must beat off the clamp that one closest to the output of the reducer. And remove the sticker. Now we clean with the sandpaper saver side and the beans lead at the place. We glue them together with unusual instant glue. We can additionally stand them with the cable ties. Also, you need to make a groove under the wires so that they aren't strongly clamped. Of course, the servo drive must enter the bucket and don't clean to anything. Wires are fastening along the edge of the bucket with a hot glue. The box itself is fastened to the bucket with the screws and nuts. It's necessary to fix so that the sensor beam doesn't catch the basket lead. For this, you can put a couple of nuts under the upper screws. The last detail remains the connecting root of the opening mechanism, which will be fixed in the hole approximately here. First I made it from the stick of the ice cream. But it was too thick and did not allow the lead to close freely. Then I did the same thing from the piece of metal jar for the canned food. In the upper part of the root server driver is fixed with a piece of paper clip and this place is glued using this super glue and soda to that strip of metal. Well, let's mount it. Very carefully twist the server to the extreme position and fix the rocket in the position of the open lid. Well, now our bucket closes and opens. Do it carefully because this Chinese product can break if it works on contrary. In principle, the hardware part is ready, let's produce the programming. At first we will write a simple algorithm without energy saving. We will constantly request the distance from the sensor. If the sensor sees something at the distance, for example 5 to 40 cm, then we will send a signal to the server to open the lead. And if the obstruction still exists, we will send the timer to open lead. As soon as the object disappeared, the Arduino will count 5 seconds and will close the lead. This is necessary in case of long walking with the trash, so that it doesn't close and doesn't interfere with the work. I was asked many times about working with Arduino without use of program code or ruthlessly speaking about visual development environments. There are several of them, Arduino, FLProg, Visuino, Scratch and the relatively new project XOT. All of them are tools that replace programming with visual blocks. I choose XOTS in the firmware and it's based on so-called node programming, where the node is block inputs and outputs that represents a separate device or function. 
and these nodes aren't written in programming language but again consist of the other nodes that is in separate programming language, very visual and interesting. Here is the example of the display node, the pins of which simply fit in line with the text and the text is displayed. This is programming without knowing the programming language. It is the separate development tool that complies the code and pours it into Arduino. We are on the XOT page, here is online development environment in which you can play. But to download firmware to Arduino you need to download the version of XOT for the computer and install it. First let's find the angles for the server to open and close the lead. On the desktop of the program which called patch we will add server node from the hardware folder. Server has two pins, first one is where connected and the other value of angle from the nil to one. By the way, the information on the nodes can be wired in the local directory. In our case, this is an open lead. Now we need to choose the angle of the closure. We will take approximately 0.9. Press deploy and upload to Arduino. Choose board, mice and Arduino Nano and 32A chip and the server port and load it. Almost, as a result it slightly turned the rocket and the angle range became from the 0.05 to 0.85. The lid opens and closes. Now you need to add everything else you want the trash bin will work intended. The distance sensor is also in the library of hardware. We press on the sensor and indicate where it's connected according to the current. The sensor frees from the one digital output. We add the corresponding node and adjust pin 4, turn on. The sensor constantly measures the distance and gives the results on the output pin in meters. Let's translate the meters into 1 convenient centimeters. For this there is a special node converter. Now you need to specify the range of the distance in which the system will sense the obstacle. In fact is that a distance that more than 2 meters so we need to set about 5 to 40 centimeters. If condition is true, then the logical signal 1 is output from their low pins, if false then 0. To catch the execution of the both condition at the same time you need a logical addition. This is the node AND. Now the logical 1 will be in the output if the distance from the sensor will go to the range indirected by us, that is, if both conditions are met. So we go to the server. The angle of rotation of the server is fed to the pin wall, we have two different angles. We can mostly release this using the node if else. That node has a logical value in the input and the output will be numeral value given here. That is when the input logic signal is 0, the node gives the numeral value F. And when the signal 1, the value T is output. According to my research, I insert angle values. At first we will do it without delay, that is, when the signal from the sensor fails into the range, the server will rotate by one angle and then to out the range to another angle. And so, the device works. As you have already noticed, to create this device we didn't need knowledge of any programming languages. We just had to think out the logic of the work correctly, know the nodes exist in the program. It is a test for a couple of evenings of reading documentation. In XOT we clearly see what data is transmitted, from where it's transmitted and where it comes. Create a long sheet of the code is the next step of the Arduino fans. You can start from here with functional programming. Next I would like to make a delay, to work with the trash was more convenient. There is a delay node. The delay is adjustable, the time is in seconds. Now if you give a logical unit to the pin set, the delay timer will start and after the time ends, it will give an impulse from the lower pin. Next we need a tricky node like a flip-flop. Of course there are no flip-flop in a project block diagram, but one can do without it. This node stores a logical value and can drop it to zero when the signal comes to RST pin. Until the timer isn't runs out and the flip-flop isn't restarted, the signal will not go to the server. This is a little unobvious, but if you put the video on the pause and sit for a while, everything falls into place, because it's obvious. XOD is now in development, new things are constantly appearing, I think alternative of this construction will be too. 
As I've been involved here for almost a month, there are some interesting ideas. I will show you them you later. They will look much more obvious for the beginner than the sheets of the barcode. All is ready, but for example you can add the LED on the board where the distance from the sensors in the desired range. Just take the no digital output and set 13th pin. As known the LED is at the 13th pin of Arduino. And to the input is given a value from the range comparator. Now if the distance from the sensor corresponds to the conditions, the LED lights up. You see how simple it all is. In general, everything works at in the first version in the bucket for about two years ago, but the film hardware looks like this. Now let's reduce the consumption and swiftly modify the security of program. So we have three energy consumers, the Arduino itself, the sensor and the server drive. To make the Arduino eat less from the battery, you need to turn off the power LED, which glows constantly when there is power on the boat. Just cut the track leading to it. Next is the voltage regulator on the back of the board. We don't need it too. Bite off the left pin. Now Arduino at sleep mode needs literally a couple of dozen microamps. The sensor can be turned on and off directly by an Arduino. But the server in standby mode consumes a lot of energy. So that we will use the MOSFET transmitter as in the video about the electronic weather forecaster. You can take any MOSFET from this list. Also you need a resistor of 100 ohms and 10 kilo ohms. I will leave the full list of the components for the project in the description under the video. The new circuit will look like this, the server power through the MOSFET. At the beginning of the movement the server takes a large current, so you need to put the capacitor of the power input. The logic of work is as follows. Unfortunately, XOT hasn't added power mode, so I wrote the firmware classically in Arduino ADE, where I regulate the system with a library low power. Wake up, feed power to the sensor, get the distance and turn off the sensor. If you need to open and close the power, connect the power to the server, turn it on and turn off the power again. It seems like everything. You will go to my page of the project on the GitHub, download my sketch, open it, run and load to the chip. Also in the settings you can set the start and end angles and the height of the sensor if you need it. Now the circuit in standby mode consumes about 0 and 1 milliamps and can safely work for a long time from the finger batteries. But look what's the matter. For stable operation you need a voltage higher than 3 and 6 volts, that's about 1 and 2 volts per battery. Judging from this graph for an alkaline battery, it can be seen that the battery discharges exactly half, that is about 1 and 1 ampere hours. That is approximately 460 days of work in standby mode, isn't bad. The battery will spend only the half of the capacity and then it can be inserted for example in the remote control from the TV. But if you use lithium batteries, they will work almost 200% of capacity and this is almost 3 ampere hours, that is 3 times longer. Lithium batteries are more expensive than alkaline batteries, but I think it's worth it. That's all, now you can safely do this project and use it. I will remind you that the radio options at the shop are very expensive. The link to the components for this device and a link to the project page with the circuit and filmware are in the description under the video. All instructions and useful information are also there. Thank for your attention, until new meeting, don't forget to subscribe not to miss new videos.